The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. I'm your host, Yue Shu, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. You'll also hear from my co-host, Julie Krafchick. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. We are excited you've joined us for an older episode. While our earlier seasons were all about dating in San Francisco, we quickly realized all the themes and learnings are universal for all daters. So we shifted to covering dating from all around the world as the seasons progress. The fun part is things happen first in San Francisco, the tech epicenter and counterculture capital of the world. We love for you to keep tuning in to our older episodes, but there is no set order to listen in. So feel free to jump to more recent seasons or relevant episodes for you. Enjoy the show. I was so excited to get my shipment from Last Bottle Wines in the mail the other day full of incredible red wines all from Napa Valley. I love wine tasting, so having this to my door couldn't be happier. Also couldn't be more excited that today's episode is brought to you by Last Bottle Wines. If you don't know already, they're a Napa-based online wine shop with a twist. They offer just one hand-picked wine per day until it sells out, and they're always at incredible prices. We're talking talking 30 to 70% off retail. And the best part is that there's no subscriptions, no fees, and no minimum purchase. And I could not be more excited to bring this offer right now because they're having a marathon sale, which is coming up March 28th and 29th. Even better, we're offering Datable listeners 10% off your first order with code Datable. So if you are a wine lover like me, this is a great time to join. And did I mention that shipping is 100% free? So So what are you waiting for? Mark your calendar for March 28th and 29th or get on it earlier if you want. You can sign up at lastbottlewines.com and use code DATABLE and find out why Last Bottle is the most fun way to discover and buy amazing wine. We are so thrilled to be partnering with Hinge. Hinge is the dating app designed to be deleted. As you all know, I'm a huge Hinge advocate as I met my partner of almost three years on the app. Even before meeting him, Hinge was always my go-to app because I met more relationship-minded people here and had some great dates. Clearly, I haven't been on the app for a little while, but I re-downloaded it to check out some of the new features. One that stood out to me was the voice prompt, my best friend's take on why you should date me, where your friend can hype you up. Not only does this make the profile creation less daunting, but it's not always easy to see your own green flags. So to test it out, I asked UA some fun prompts to get her take on what I could put if I was dating again. So the first one, how long have we known each other? What was your first impression of me and how has that changed? Julie and I have known each other for almost 10 years. My first impression of Julie was that she's very social, but I've learned that she has a lot more depth to her beyond the social butterfly that she is. My next prompt, what do you think are my green flags? I would say she's deeply loyal. She believes in love, curious mindset, and she is fearlessly ambitious. And then last but not least, what kind of friend am I? Julie is the kind of friend who will always have your back, no matter what. Damn, that feels nice to hear. So download Hinge and try voice prompts today. Then find someone worth deleting the app for. This episode of Datable is brought to you by 500 Brunches. Meet like-minded people who share your interests over brunch. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Datable, a show that opens a candid conversation about dating in San Francisco. And um, the male voice you just heard comes from Michael Vargas. And the female (laughs) voice that you heard comes from UA. And on each episode, we dissect a dating story. And today we have a dating story from our friend, Sasha. 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 Sasha, Sasha. (laughs) Sasha, are you there? It's uh, Sasha Fierce. And we have Beyonce on the phone right now. (laughs) (laughs) Sasha, can you tell us your dating story? So, okay. So let's start with almost two years ago. I came to San Francisco and I really didn't know anyone. And I decided that I wanted to use online dating because I wanted to date people and you know, I wanted to meet new people. Started talking to this guy on Tinder and he told me, we basically set up a time to meet um, and we said that we were gonna go rock climbing. 
And so I was super excited. Like I was like, oh, I'm not, you know, I haven't been rock climbing in a long time. And sounds adventurous. You know, so like, yeah. So I was like, okay, here I go. It took me like two hours to get there because I got lost because I'm like horrible with directions. Anyway, so it took me, it should have taken me like 45 minutes, but I ended up getting on the wrong bus, like going too far in one direction. And, you know, this was when I first came to San Francisco. So I really didn't know my way around. Um, and so I got there and I didn't see him there. And then all of a sudden I get a text from him and he's like, Hey, I am so sorry, but I'm not going to be able to make it. What? Um, Ouch. Yeah. And he made this, like, some excuse about, like, so his friend with Burning Man. Always something with Burning Man in the city. Burning Man gets in the way of everything. (laughs) Because this was, like, right before Burning Man in August. And so he basically just, like, totally ditched me. And he was just like, I'm so sorry. Like, I have to do something with my friend. I was really pissed off. Basically, I went off on text with him. Oh. Like, I just went off on him. I was like, listen, like, this is so not acceptable. Like, it took me like two hours to get here. And like, I was so excited for it. And he was just like, oh my God, you must think I'm so flaky. I'm so sorry. And he was, he, I, I was actually surprised at how much he was like, how much he was caring about it, given that he's never met me before. I was like, you're going to take me to a nice restaurant. Hell yeah! (laughs) French laundry, here we come. Sasha Fierce! (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I was just like, dude, you can't just ditch me and then have our next date be some, like, Chipotle or something, you know? like like, Oh, fuck Chipotle. And I was like, listen, I'm willing to give you a second chance, but you need to take me to a nice restaurant. Mm. And so he's like, okay. And eventually, like, a couple days later, he sends me, like, a reservation for that next weekend it's this like really fancy new american restaurant it was one of those restaurants where the chef is like so famous that like it's named after the chef and i thought it would be funny to kind of like play a little trick on him (laughs) and i'd never met him before but this is just like something i do i call up the restaurant and i'm like hey like it's gonna be his birthday It was not his birthday, (laughs) but I was just like, oh, it's going to be his birthday. And, you know, it'd be really nice if we could like have a surprise for him or something. Then he picks me up. Oh, he picks you up. Oh, there you go. Step up. Like in a car or in an Uber? Uh, In his car. Oh, fancy. The man has wheels. I know in San Francisco. And so I was just like, damn, okay, maybe this ain't that half bad, you know? Anyway, he, he picks me up in his car. And I kind of just like immediately get a friend vibe. Oh. Um, and so we go to the restaurant, we get there and um, they sit us down and they take out the menus <laughs> and the menus are like, happy birthday, Michael. Like They say happy birthday on them. And he's just like, oh, what's going on? Like, <laughs> And I was like, well, you know, like, just go with it, you know, whatever. So, so the waitress comes over, like by this point, like he's ordered like this super nice glass of wine. Um, and like, it's like a 10 course meal. I don't know. It was just like a ridiculous place. Okay. Like I've never been on a first date like this before. Oh, this was before we got the wine. She's like, Hey, can I just see your ID? And so I was like, in my head, I was like freaking out. Cause I was like, Oh shit. She's going to see that it's not his birthday. <laughs> And she was like, oh, looks like you're celebrating your birthday a little early. It was like (laughs) something ridiculous like that. (laughs) Yeah, and I just basically, I just made him feel really awkward. But on the inside, I was just like laughing really hard. I was just like, this is is funny. It was kind of like this mini revenge for me. Did he pay? Did he pay for the meal? Yeah, it was like, it's like a $600 meal. Damn. Wow. Like, this is not a joke, okay? Like, it's like, okay. I can't afford that. Like, I'm not trying to do that on a first date with someone I've never met before. Like, I was shocked that he was so willing to, like, you know, take me to such a nice place without even knowing me. Like, How did this date end? Um, I mean, I definitely tried my best to give him a good time, you know? Um, and I thought he was what, like under the right, table. Yeah, like, like, well, how, the did you, how did you give him a good time? <laughs> no, I don't mean like that. I just mean, you know, I, I tried to be like a good dinner guest and a good date. 
But I, you know, I wasn't going to pretend like I had chemistry with him when I didn't. He drove me home afterwards. He went for the kiss, but I gave him a kiss on the cheek. Oh, <laughs> man. The turn. That is the most expensive kiss on the cheek ever. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Well, I don't know. It, it kind of, it's, it's interesting. I almost feel like um, I owed him, which mm. I, I know is wrong. Yeah. Um, I know that's not the correct way to feel. He decided to spend that money on him, me. I didn't do anything wrong. Did Anyways, you, um, did he text you again or did you see him again? Yeah. So, um, I didn't see him again, actually. So, okay. So there, um, there are three things I want to talk about with your story. The first one is yeah. calling someone out after they flake on you. That's exactly what was the first thing I wanted to talk about yeah. because how successful was this one where you call someone out on being a flake, then you get you know, you get freaking cheesecake that's worth a hundred dollars plus all the other yeah. goodies that was left. <laughs> and you it. don't even have to give them a hand job. It's, it's, it's such great. a <laughs> great exchange. And he even picked you up and he, he went the nine after that. I really think that a lot of people, um, well, first of all, a lot of people in San Francisco are flaky. Yes. Yes. So people flake out on dates last minute. People don't show up. They ghost on people. I'm so proud of you for calling him out in the first place because I, I actually kudos. think a lot of people don't do that, right? Yes, yeah, round of applause. This is our round of, first round of applause for Aw, thanks, yeah. guys. Yeah. But I, I would also say the same goes for men. I think it's really hot when a guy can call me out on something I'm doing that's disrespectful or that's not cool because I think we just need to – that's how we learn and grow as people. Sometimes when you do stuff like that, you're not – uh, cognizant of it so it's better if someone someone else tells you so you're more aware of it right mm -hmm. second thing i want to bring up in your story is this feeling of guilt after someone pays for your meal Ooh, yeah right absolutely so i think a lot of people feel this way if you go on a date with someone maybe you don't really see chemistry with them but they pay for your meal so you feel like you're obligated to go on a second date or to spend more time with them yeah yeah totally so do guys, when guys pay for meals, do you mm. expect something more? You know what's funny? It's actually kind of, there's a before part mm. where it's like, oh, this person's spending time with me. So out of their busy day, out of their busy schedule, and I want to be someone who provides them value. So that, it kind of leads us to be like, oh, I, I should pay for the meal. Mm. Um, so it's more about like, at least for me and what I've heard from many of my, the, the guy people that I've talked to, the guy people, the guy <laughs> species, if you will. Um, <laughs> That it's like, oh wow, this person's actually spending time with me. They're they're coming out to meet with me, so I feel like I should I should pay for dinner. I just hate it when dating becomes so transactional. Yeah. I, I really feel like yeah. if you like spending time with someone, you should want to pay for their meal. I'm very old fashioned in the sense that I think the guy should pay for, for a first date. But I mean other women would feel differently. They'll go 50-50. It doesn't even matter. I just feel like don't make it so transactional. And you should never feel guilty for someone else paying for your meal. Right. And it, and it's, again, like the first date, right? The first date, there shouldn't really be crazy expectations because you have no idea how things are going to turn out. Right. That's true. I, I totally agree with you, A. Like, I, I think that it's all about the first date, right? So I think it's the guy's job to woo the girl on the first date. That doesn't mean he has to pay for every meal thereafter. Yeah. Just the first date, you know, because it's – and and that's great, a great feeling. I think that – and normally I don't have this guilt. Um, I think that it was just because it was such an extreme circumstance. But also you didn't pick the restaurant. Right. So. I think that's a big thing is that he said we're going to go to this restaurant. So since he picked it – I mean, you did ask for something nice, but like – you know, that's over the top, not over the top, but that's extremely on the end of extreme nicety. And so since yeah. he picked it, that's got to be on him. Let's hold that thought for a second. We'll get right back to it. This episode is sponsored by Via. We all know there are things that can help set the mood in the bedroom, but did you know a little THC could also do that? Yes, Via has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. This gummy, wow, it will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. I've been pleasantly surprised by the High Love gummies because it is just the right amount of 
THC for me to have a good time without feeling sleepy. And hey, if THC is not your thing, Via also offers a wide array of other gummies without it. And everything legally ships in 50 states with discreet packaging directly to your door. So if you're over 21, you can get 15% off and a free pack of award-winning Dreams THC plus CBN sleep gummies with our exclusive code DATEABLE at ViaHemp.com. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Let the gummies work their magic. Head to ViaHemp.com and use the code DATEABLE to receive 15% off and one free sample of their sleepy dream gummies. That's ViaHemp.com and use the code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E at checkout. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. This episode is made possible by Badlands Pets. As you all know, Mojo, my precious baby, is the reason why I found love in the first place. He made me feel love again. So I would do anything to ensure his health and longevity. And actress Katherine Heigl and I have that in common. She's helped save over 16,000 dogs through her foundation. And after doing a ton of research, she feels there's one place we can look to to improve any dog's health, and that's their food. So fortunately, she found that just by adding a few special superfoods to her dog's food, she saw huge transformations in their health. So she's made a 20-minute video explaining step-by-step how anyone can do the same thing to see incredible changes in their dog's health. I've definitely re-looked at what I'm feeding Mojo and making sure that he only has one life to live and I want to make sure it's the best damn life. So if you want to keep your dog healthy and happy, go to badlandsfood.com slash dateable and watch Catherine's video right now. Again, that's B-A-D-L-A-N-D-S-F-O-O-D.com slash D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E. As you know, I recently left my corporate job and I've been in total recovery mode all about self-care. One of my new routines is the nighttime shower before bed. There's just something about washing away the day and that reflection that's been super helpful for me. I've been using one of our partners, Osea's Mega Moisture Duo. This combo body oil and body lotion are so freaking incredible. It literally feels like I'm at a spa. I realize that the secret is seaweed and other skin level ingredients that are normally reserved for face products. And that's why I was so excited when Osea became one of our partners. And, you know, we're so grateful for partners like this because one, they keep the show going, but they're also super good for all of our listeners and for our own well-being. So if you want to have that nighttime bliss like I am doing, you can get 10% off your first order site-wide with code DATEABLE at OseaMalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. So head to OseaMalibu.com and use the code DATEABLE for 10% off. Let us know which products you end up going with, share them in social. Super excited to see what you end up choosing. Uh, The third point I want to bring up about your story is that how do you wrap up a relationship in a way that you want to be honest with your feelings and you want to tell them that you no longer want to see them because you don't see a future with them? I think what we see in the dating culture today, especially with online dating, people just kind of ghost or disappear without wrapping it up. Like, you know what? I think you're a great person, but I just don't see anything going further. No nice bow at the end. Yeah. So why don't we do that more? Because if I were him, I would like to know, you know, that you're not interested anymore. So I don't keep chasing you. I look like a fool if I keep chasing you. You know, I I think that in the end, it's all about just telling it like it is, you know, because you don't want to lead someone on. And I, and I think it's like karma is a bitch, right? So if you disrespect someone or their time, someone's going to end up doing the same thing to you. And I always like to say this quote, we're all each other's consequences. So if you didn't wrap it up with him, he could have done that to someone else. It, or it also like, just, it, it's a relief when you actually tell the truth. It's a little scary at first, but you know, right after you do it, you're like, okay, you know, now, now he knows what's going on. Now everyone is on the same page and we can move on. And I, I find that so many people, uh, they play that game, you know, of just going back and forth, back and forth, even, even when they don't actually have the intention to, you know, have a real relationship with this person. Well, because nobody really wants to close the door, especially in the right. city. Everybody wants to leave it cracked open just a little bit, just in case for those lonely nights <laughs> after you've come back from booty SF right. and you're like, hey, 
and then you slowly can open up the door. Yep. <laughs> can I come back in? <laughs> Sasha Fierce, now that we've talked about this, love to hear what are some of your takeaways now that we, you kind of got a different perspective and some outside perspectives? I'm not going to stop being sassy <laughs> because I've always found that to be a huge advantage, especially as a woman in the dating scene. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got something really awesome out of it, right? Like, I was just like, you're, you're going to treat me the way I deserve to be treated. And then I got treated really awesomely, right? So it's, yeah. it's all about asking for what you deserve and not being scared to do that. Yeah, I think that's great. And uh, a takeaway that I'm, I'm taking away from this is, yes, the takeaway that I take <laughs> away, very, I, I like to live a meta life. Um, is to be honest as soon as possible, right? And to let people know what's going on because it just it's so important to know what's happening so that people can make choices and then live their life that they the way that they want to live. My takeaway is everybody could use a little bit of feedback. So it never hurts to give someone honest feedback. Boom. Boom. Um, Sasha, you're now a professional matchmaker. We want to hear more about this. Did this story have anything to do with you wanting to become a matchmaker? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, basically all of my dating up until now has has contributed to my desire to be a matchmaker. I find that, you know, having an outside perspective is always, especially with somebody who knows the dating scene in San Francisco super well, is so valuable. And, uh, you know, like you were saying before, feedback is so important and feedback is really hard to get on a date. And as a matchmaker, you know, you have a really unique opportunity to uh, give people access to feedback, which, you know, you don't go up to someone after a date and you're not like, so how'd I do? You know what I mean? <laughs> Here's a little form for you to fill out. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your business and your website. I just launched my website. It's oksasha.com. I help people navigate the dating scene in San Francisco. I do like a matching assessment where we find out love languages, their love languages, must-haves, deal breakers. I learn about their life. And then um, I help them with their online dating presence, do kind of like a profile makeover. And I go basically what I do is I go around being a chick magnet. So my, I basically view every day of my life just looking for awesome women. Give us your website one more time. It's OKSasha, S-A-S-H-A dot com. Super. And we have a question of the day. So this question comes from uh, Ron Burgundy in <laughs> San Diego. And his question is actually a great one. And it goes, how do I... Lean in for the first kiss. Basically, he's asking, how is it that I can know that I can have that? Or what can I do to know that this person's ready for this first kiss? Gosh, I I feel like when the moment is right, there's like always a pause or a silence. And right before it gets too awkward, you just go in for the kiss. Okay. Yeah, so this is actually a question I've gotten a lot from clients. Um, it's kind of like just, it's basically just trying to gauge how the girl feels, right? Like you want to see if it's appropriate to give a kiss. And so what I tell people is start off with micro advances. So what that means is, you know, maybe put your put your hand on the small of her back while you guys are walking. See how she responds. Put your arm around her, you know, try to put your arm around her when you're sitting down. You know, just these things and see if she gets closer to you or see if she smiles, you know, just see if it's a positive response. And if it is, then you'll have even more confidence to go ahead with that kiss towards the end. Yeah, I I agree with you. Um, Doing those micro movements of just first off, seeing how the person is responding to the to your body language, right? Is a person moving towards or away? Very simple ways that you can test that out. Like you said, the the touch of the back, the arm around the shoulder or whatever it looks like. Uh, And then uh, I think another thing that helps out for guys is don't just like, I think that you shouldn't just charge in, like Mm -hmm. smash your face against their face. I think what you should do is, I think Will Smith put it very well in Hitch where he says 90% of the way, 
because it allows for her to actually make the conscious choice of am I going to move forward or not. And I think giving them that that little bit of a space where you're putting a lot of energy towards it, but still allowing her to be part of the choice at the end of the day makes uh, will help you know if that should be a first kiss or not. I love that. And I'm going to push my own agenda right here. Um, a lot of people nowadays go in for a first kiss after a few drinks. So it's always when they're a little bit liquored up. And that makes it easier, yes. But the best way to gauge chemistry is to do a sober first kiss. It's much harder to do. It takes a lot more effort and thought. I'm a huge proponent for hashtag sober first kiss. Hashtag sober first kiss. Indeed. Yes. All right. Okay, we're going to wrap this up. Don't forget to submit your dating stories. And remember, you can always be anonymous. We can change your name. We can change the story, whatever you need to protect your identity. Check out datable.com. And uh, one more thing, folks. Stay dateable. Woo! Thanks, Sasha. Thanks, Bye. guys. The Datable Podcast is recorded in San Francisco. We would like to thank our sponsor, 500 Brunches, for making this happen. To connect with us, visit dateablepodcast.com. Mm-hmm.